and we hit Angel, Demon, and probably a Lathless as our dragon, so that was a beautiful hit. Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another Brawl gameplay video. Today we're checking out the 100 card historic Brawl format with a Kalia Zenith Seeker deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Kalia is a 3 mana 3 3 legendary human cleric with flying and vigilance, and when Kalia enters the battlefield, we can look at the top 6 cards of our library and then reveal an angel, demon, and or dragon card from among them and put all of those into our hand. So Kalia can potentially draw 3 cards, and in fact, all the creatures in this deck are either angels, demons, or dragons, with 11 of each creature type. So let's take a look at all those creatures first, starting out with a Dream Devourer, a 2 mana creature that essentially gives us an installment plan for some of our more expensive cards, making it easier to cast them. At 3 mana we've got Righteous Valkyrie, gaining a life whenever an Angel or a Cleric enters the battlefield. Resplendent Angel can get plus 2 plus 2 and lifelink until end of turn, and generates a 4-4 Angel token if we gain 5 or more life. We've got Emmet Eternal, a 5-5 with Afflict 3, meaning if the opponent blocks it, they lose 3 life. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, we put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on it, and if it deals combat damage to a player, we remove all counters. Then Baleful Amet, a 3 mana 4 3, Crocodile Demon with a lifelink. As it enters the battlefield, put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on target creature we control. And Varagoth, a 2 3 Demon with Death Touch and Boast for 1 on a black, in which case we can search our library for any card and put it on top of our deck. At 4 mana, Glorious Protector gives us a potential play on turn 2 by foretelling it and then later cast it for 2 and a white. A 3 4 Flash Flyer that can potentially save our creatures from a sweeper effect. We've got Linvala, shutting down activated abilities from our opponent's creatures. We've got Eradicator Valkyrie, a 4 3 life linking angel with hexproof from Planeswalkers. Nightmare Shepherd, a nice demon that returns our creatures in the form of a 1 1. Spawn of Mayhem, another powerful demon that can grow over time if life totals start getting low. We've got Leyline Tyrant, that can store up our red mana and potentially deal damage when it dies. Opportunistic Dragon can steal a human or artifact from the opponent. Varag's Bladewing can be kicked, generating an additional 4-4 Dragon token. We've got a Seraph of the Scales, which can potentially gain Death Touch or Vigilance until end of turn, and has Afterlife too, so if it dies we generate two 1-1 Spirit tokens. Immersturm Predator can potentially gain Indestructible by sacrificing another creature, and can clean up graveyards and get plus 1 plus 1 counters over time. And then we've got Cardur Doom Scourge, which forces the opponent to attack in the next turn. And when attacking creatures die, we can potentially drain the opponent as well. And then Aurelia, a 2 5 Angel with Mentor, that can potentially distribute plus 1 plus 1 counters. And at the beginning of combat, can also pump up one of our creatures based on which colors they are. And then at 5 mana, we've got Angel of Invention, which can fabricate 2, so either enters with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters or generates 2 1 1 servo tokens, and has a flying vigilance and lifelink, and pumps our creatures by 1. We've got Angel of Sanctions, a nice removal spell on a stick, as well as Baneslayer Angel with flying first strike lifelink, protection from demons and from dragons. Lara Dawnbringer is very similar to Baneslayer Angel and also gives other angels we control plus 1 plus 1 and lifelink. We've got Archfiend of Ifner, which we can cycle for 2 mana, so it's also potentially a 2 mana play, otherwise a 5 4 flyer. And then we've got Doom Whisper, we can pay a life to surveil 2, giving us some card selection, and a nice 6 6 flying trampler. We've got a Glorybringer, which can exert to deal 4 damage to a non dragon creature we don't control. Goldspan Dragon generates a treasure when it attacks, making it easier to deploy our hand. And then Terror of the Peaks deals damage to the opponent whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control. And then Shadrach's Silver Quill from Strixhaven, a 2 5 flying double striking dragon, giving us a ton of options at the beginning of combat. And then moving on to our curve toppers here Burning Rune Demon, 6 6 flyer, that when it enters the battlefield, we can search our library for two cards, and then the opponent can put one of them into our graveyard, the other one goes into our hand. Next up is Lathless Dragon Queen, which generates a 5 5 dragon token whenever a non token dragon enters the battlefield under our control. Rakdos, the showstopper, is going to flip some coins and potentially destroy some non demon creatures. We've got Bladewing the Risen, which can reanimate a dragon from our graveyard and potentially pump those up as well. And last but not least, Velamachus Lorehold's 5 5 Flying Vigilance Haste and can cast some spells for free when it attacks. And then taking a look at our non creature spells. Of course, we get to play with Swords to Plowshares added in the Mystical Archives, as well as a Lightning Bolt and some premium one mana removal spells. Bloodsheaf's Thirst rounds out our one mana removal. 
at two mana. We've got Cast Down, Doom Blade, Heartless Act, Thundering Rebuke, Vanishing Verse, Lightning Helix, and Rip Apart as more cheap interaction. Since our game plan in the first couple turns is usually to set up our mana, make sure the board is relatively clear, start deploying some threats, and only really cast Kalia once we're empty handed or close to empty handed to refuel and find more threats to deploy. So usually don't want to play Kalia on turn 3, otherwise we'll often have to discard to hand size. Then we've got some 2 mana ramp as well, of course Arcane Signet, a staple in Brawl decks, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, and Mindstone. They don't make colored mana necessarily for Kalia, but still helps us ramp into some of our more expensive cards. Then we've got Spit Flame as removal spell we can buy back if we play a Dragon, Deafening Clarion as a cheap sweeper that can also give our creatures lifelink, Savai Crystal and a Dragon Sword as more ramp and mana fixing, Dragon Sword also potentially drawing cards when we play a Dragon, and then a Firemind Vessel, one last ramp artifact, and then we've got a few sweepers with Extinction Event, Wrath of God, Day of Judgment, and at 5 mana Crux of Fate, and then at 7 mana we also get to play with a Ruinous Ultimatum as a one-sided sweeper. Then Immortal Sun makes sense as we don't have any Planeswalkers ourselves, so this can shut down Planeswalkers, pump our creatures, give us a discount, and draw extra cards. And then Emiria's Call as a land that can potentially make two Angels as well. And then going over the rest of our mana base, pretty much all the dual lands you can uh, wish for in the Mardu Colors, including the Thriving Lands from Jumpstart, which are pretty good in three color decks, five of each basic. And I'm not going to bore you with all the dual lands in the deck, you can always check out the deck list linked in the description. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Muldrotha, the Gravetide deck. Don't think I can keep a hand without black mana in it. This is better. We do get a free mulligan, so might as well make use of it. So we can play Thriving more naming white. Stitcher Supplier gonna fill the graveyard. And a Traveler's Amulet. Alright, for now, probably just Cold Steel Hearts. And then... Think naming red makes sense. So we have double white, double black, double red. And the other deck's got plenty of powerful evasive creatures. So our game plan is just to run the opponent out of removal and kind of overpower them with our flyers. And for now, I could play Spawn of Mayhem, could also play some more ramp artifacts. If I go Mindstone, not quite enough mana to go Signet into Kalia. So I guess we'll just play Spawn for now. Opponent's got an omen of the sea in response. So we can start beating down. And then next turn maybe play Doom Whisperer. Or if we want to use Source to Plowshares, we could just deploy more of our ramp artifacts as well. Our deck doesn't really need any card draw effects because Kalia is our card draw engine. A Lenor Visionary can make it possible for the opponent to play Muldrotha next turn. So far nothing too bank breaking in the graveyard. Varagoth could be okay, but I still prefer playing the Doom Whisper here. Opponent's gonna brainstorm in response. Alright, so we've got two threats in play. We'll see if the opponent can answer them. And if they do, we can reload with Kalia. And then probably not gonna surveil. And next turn I could play Mindstone, Signet, and a 3 drop. Opponent gonna draw more with Compulsive Research. So maybe looking for answers to our flyers. 
deciding against Muldrotha. Elvish Reclaimer. That's fine. So I'm not really looking for anything specific with our Surveil. So might as well take my draw step. Lyra seems like a fine draw. So we'll just add more pressure to the board here. Could get punished by a Sweeper, although I don't expect a Muldrotha deck to have a ton of Sweepers necessarily. Especially not ones that can deal with large flyers like this. Crux of Fate comes to mind. So yeah, our opponent's at 9, and they need to deal with two of our flyers. So potentially 7 mana for the opponents. And Narset gonna go digging. Finds Abundant Harvest. Yeah, opponent's running out of uh, time here. My Triton can gain two, but that's not enough. And our opponent explodes, a pretty straightforward game, just played out some powerful flyers, opponent didn't have any answers, and that was it. Didn't even need our commander. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing off against Korvold. So our hand has some nice interaction with Swords, Cast and Lightning Helix. No ramp to get Spawn of Mayhem and Silver Quill in play. And only two lands, so we could struggle to deploy some threats. But I think I'll try it. We are playing 40 lands, plus we've got a bunch of ramp artifacts. So hopefully we can find some of those. And in the meantime, we should be able to survive. Alright, land is good. So we've got all three removal spells available. Crusader. I wouldn't mind drawing an extra card here. So I might keep that in play. And then fire off a Lightning Helix in the opponent's turn, maybe. Alright, Dragon Sword is a good draw. So I can play that plus Swords in the same turn. Probably still going to kill the Crusader now. Opponent could have a sacrifice effect to prevent me gaining three. It's gonna be a Zvela, Ice Shaper. So it doesn't die to cast down, it does die to source to plowshares. So we could go Dragon Sword into Swords. Could just play Spawn of Mayhem. And then hope to draw lands for one of our five drops next turn. Probably want Dragon Sword in play before we play Silver Quill. So I think it's okay to play the Spawn of Mayhem here. Since Fela isn't really a must-answer-immediately type of card. And then maybe keep Swords as an answer to Corvold, which we also cannot answer with Cast Down. Murder Strider kills our Demon. That's okay. Found a land, although it's a tapped one. So just play Dragon Sword to keep up our removal during the opponent's turn. And then Angel of Invention, setting up our Shatterix to potentially pump the team could also be an interesting interaction. Opponent just runs out Murder Strider. Yeah, we'll use Cast Down since we don't have any other targets at the moment. Want to keep the board clear. A lightning Bolts. So, I don't mind Shatterix potentially draw cards or keep up swords. Or we could Angel of Invention. Not sure what to do with Shadrix if we play him. I guess I could give the opponent a plus one counter, make an Inkling ourselves. That's not bad. Sure. So a target player gets plus one counters and Inkling. We get an Inkling, opponent gets the counters since they only have Zvela, which... It's probably going to be tapping instead of attacking. Alright, Eldest Reborn forces Sacrifice, but luckily we can sacrifice the Inkling. So that worked out. And probably just draw end of turn. 
Wrath of God gives us a nice reset button. For now, I could play Angel of Invention, make tokens, and then pump the team with Shadrix, and maybe let the opponent draw a card at the cost of one life. And then make two servos. Could have also played Mindstone into Angel, but I want to keep up my removal to potentially take out Korvold. So, opponent draws, we get counters. And that's 8 damage here from our double striking dragon. So our opponent's gonna need their own sweeper here. Can discard. Probably can get rid of Mindstone now. Keep the Wrath as insurance in case something goes wrong. The Zealots is acceptable. Blood Artists could be worth killing. And I carried it, all their opponent seems dead on board here. They don't really have any mana left. And they're gonna die to our flyers. Plus we have a Lightning Bolt that can go upstairs. So once again, we get the counters, opponent loses one life. And our opponent's more than dead here. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing off against a Cody deck. So our opponent's all spells. Limvala is pretty good against Cody, and Doomblade can also destroy it, so yeah, I'll try it. Glorybringer, another answer. So we just want to hit our land drops. Question is whether we play Kalia next turn or not. Inquisition can take Doomblade. Well, now there's less of a concern that we'll have to discard to hand size, so I'm fine playing out Kalia. And uh, I guess I'll shock myself so the summit comes into play untapped. Ooh, that's a miss. Doesn't happen very often with 33 creatures in the deck we can hit. Still a 3-3 flyer. So let's attack and then since Cody isn't in play yet, probably fine to play Predator instead. It's gonna get countered by a Supreme Will. Counter spell's not the best combo with Cody, but Supreme Will's kind of an exception because you can also use it as a cantrip. Angel of Sanctions also a clean answer for Cody, but Glorybringer seems like the cleanest solution overall. And then we can maybe play Valkyrie before playing Angel. And Lenor Elves also gets shut down by Linvala. Put on passes. We'll start by attacking. And then... Linvala might be playing into a Sweeper a little bit too much. So I can maybe give him a Righteous Valkyrie, which we're less worried about losing. And if this eats a counter spell, I'm pretty happy to. Opponent's gonna despar Glorybringer. And approach of the second sun, so that's the opponent's win condition here. Okay. Probably play Limvala now. Shut down the Lenor Elves, gain some life. Hit for five. And try and keep up the pressure. 
opponent's gonna commence the end game to draw two, make a 4-4 four, four zombie army. So they're getting closer to their approach. We're at 27. We need 32 life before Valkyrie pumps our team. So this would put us to 31, which is one life point short. Right now we're hitting for 8 in the air. Do I need to play around the sweeper is a question. Let's start by attacking. Bowen's at 4. So, at least if I play Doom Whisper, I can surveil a bunch. And potentially find some solutions or haste creatures. So I think that's still okay. Although we might be overextending a little bit. The fact that they main phased commences interesting. Yeah, I'll play the Doom Whisper. And we'll see if they have a sweeper here. Teach by example to copy their next spell. And Assassin's Trophy. Alright, fair enough. So, no point in surveilling since we're gonna shuffle here. But we get to double ramp. Takes out Linvala as well. I guess I can search a land and then surveil and then decline the second search. That's also an option. Yeah, probably have enough mana where I can afford to. Lightning Helix seems relevant. Leyline Tyrants, kind of whatever. Yeah, I'll keep a Lightning Helix on top. And our opponent concedes. I guess they were probably still dead to our flyers here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing off against Sarkon, Fireblood, so Mono Red Dragons. Our hand's a bit too clunky, only two lands, no ramp. This is more balanced at least. Three sweepers. No great answers to Sarkon, and Glorybringer's actually kind of awkward too in the matchup since it doesn't deal damage to dragons. So, don't love this hand actually. I can play Kalia, maybe find some demons, dragons and angels along the way, but uh, it's not ideal. So do we ship it back? It's probably still good enough to keep after we've already taken our first mulligan. And both Extinction Event and Wrath are ways to deal with large dragons that the opponent can ramp out with Sarkon. So not sure which land I should prioritize here. I'll go with the Swamp. Alright, Firemind's Vessel could be great, so just need land 4. Marauding Raptor. I'm gonna be met by, I think, a Righteous Valkyrie. That gives us a way to pressure Sarkon, and we can still cast Clarion later. I'll take the 2. Hazard's Monument, okay. I think I just play Vessel then. And there's Sarkon. It's just gonna loot. This card is an Ox of Agonos. Then I can play Arcane Signet into Glorybringer. Send our Dragon at Sarkon. Valkyrie at the opponent, since that attack early on with the Raptor means we probably can't reliably block the Raptor anyway. Sarkon down. Still have plenty of interaction in hand, and now plenty of mana to leverage Kalia a bit better. Alright, Skargon Hellkites. Triggers monuments. We can fuel the Ox. Discards Lightning Bolt, so that's what they had when they attacked with the Raptor. 
All right, so we cannot deal for damage to the Hellkite, unfortunately. Extinction event on odd isn't good. So I think we're okay with attack with both and then Deafening Clarion second main if they block. And then do I exert Glorybringer on the Raptors? A question. Probably not. Since it still dies to Clarion. So we'll do this. And then we can play Kalia. And we hit Angel, Demon, and probably Laughless as our dragon, so that was a beautiful hit. And Baneslayer Angel with protection from dragons, also pretty relevant in this matchup. Sarkon shows up again. This time to play a dragon. Gadrak, we still cannot take out with Glorybringer. So what's to play? We've got six, seven, eight, and nine mana available. I can get like a Doom Blade plus a Thundering Rebuke. Heartless Act also works. And get a Doom Blade, I guess. So either way, Gadrak's gonna bite the dust. We get Doom Blade. Gadrak dies to Doom Blade. And we get to take out Sarkon, deal three. So is it almost time to escape Ox? They need a few more cards. And Darfleet Daredevil can replay Doomblade to take out Glorybringer. Or Heartless Act for the Burning Rune Demon. So this particular interaction could have been a reason to get Rebuke plus Doomblade, so they couldn't kill my demon, but I think we'll be just fine here. There's no immediate need for Baneslayer Angel, so I could see playing Lathless first, and then we can also maybe use the ability to pump our dragon. But our opponent's gonna throw in the towel too far behind. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand, facing off against Shadrach's Silver Quill. We've got a Dragon Sword to ramp into Ragdos the Showstopper, which is gonna be pretty exciting. We get to flip some coins and see if we get to wipe the board or not. I guess keeping the basic in hand for potential snarls could be reasonable here. So I'll play Pathway. Alright, I don't think it matters too much what we play next. Keep up Vanishing Verse just in case. Silencer. Okay, we could Swords to Plowshares it. Opponent's name's Kalia, which makes sense, although I wasn't really planning to play Kalia. Uh, let's untap, and then probably just gonna go Dragon Swords into Swords. Could also keep Swords for their commander, although by then we might be able to play a Rakdos as well. Could also just wait until we play Rakdos and see if we get to kill the Silencer for free. And then Amat Eternal is a demon, so that's not gonna die. Farmind's Vessel's a nice one too. So we'll just keep on ramping. And for now ignore what T-Point's doing. Opponent keeps up for mana. So don't really want to play Rakdos quite yet. I could play Amit Eternal and then still maybe Vanishing Verse on the Sanctum, which is eventually going to be a problem. So I think we'll do that now. And then keep up 
swords to plowshares. Our opponent does have a giant killer for the Amets. So I guess it's going to shrink down to a 4-4, but yeah, our opponent needs to cast a spell for it to get another minus one counter, so that's not happening. Alright, just play a tap line and pass. And then hope the opponent plays Shadrix. And then we'll see what they decide to do here. So we're probably going to get the plus one counter since we don't have any creatures in play. And then the opponent can choose if they want to draw a card or make an inkling. Opponent draws a card. We'll take another three. And then, yeah, play Rakdos and hope to win some coin flips. If not, we still have a Swords as backup. All right, we won our two flips. It's a nice one-sided board wipe. And now we can play Kalia. Giant Killer joins the fun. And Soul Shatter gonna take out Rakdos. Could Swords just to gain six, doesn't seem necessary. All right, let's see what we hit. Right, just an Archfiend could have been better. Still worth playing instead of cycling, I think. Exiles the Archfiend. So we're trading off some resources. And we're kind of hoping the opponent eventually answers Kalia so we can replay her and draw more cards. Maybe planning to use a giant killer. Could use swords on giant killer since we have Heartless Act for Shadrix now. Only gains the opponent one life. Right, Bane Slayer is a good draw. We'll attack first. Protection from dragons also relevant against Shadrix. Could see a sweeper in our future, but then we can replay Kalia. Doom foretold. Okay, don't mind sacrificing Kalia here. Doom is probably a better play for now. So we'll attack. Opponent takes it. And then play Doom Whisper. And we can surveil towards our next big creature here if they answer it. Doom Foretold goes away. A Leyline of Sanctity I don't care about. And we'll surveil. Alright, Arcane Signet Swamp can probably both go to the graveyard. I think we can afford another surveil. Rebuke Triome can also go. Let's keep digging. Doomblade Crux of Fates. Crux of Fates. Could, I guess, be a clean solution to Shadrix if we name Dragon. So I'll keep the Crux, and then we'll just draw, play Kalia after attacking. Could still Surveil to set up my Kalia hit. All right, Subtle happens, so no point in Surveilling when we're going to Shuffle. So we'll get to Basics. And uh, let's see here, Plains Mountain seems good. And yeah, let's see what Kalia reveals. Felomachus Varagoth, I'll take it. Can play Varagoth. We won't have Heartless Act available for Silver Quill, but I think I want to get the Boaster going. So they could protect Chadrix by 
putting a counter on it from Heartless Sanct, technically, but they don't know about it. And Crux of Fate can simply name Dragon to kill Shadrix. Velomanka is going to help us close out the game as well. And our opponent scoops it up. Alrighty, so we get to have some fun with our Kalia Brawl deck. Definitely been enjoying this 100 card Historic Brawl, and it's a lot more diversity than the regular 60 card version, so hopefully we'll get something like this as a permanent mode on Arena. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.